So what is free speech? What is free speech? What is free speech? Free speech is being able to express yourself and talking about whatever you want without getting assaulted and or arrested. Or like just censored. Free speech is like speaking your mind. Like no matter what you say, people may disagree with you, but it's your opinion. I think it empowers people. It's a privilege. It's just a special like treasured thing that so many people just take for granted. Should everyone have free speech? It's a difficult question. Mm -hmm. And should everybody have it? Yes, they should. But obviously there has to be a line somewhere. Yeah. This is going to sound terrible, but I don't think so. And you believe that some people shouldn't have that basic right? Like, I think free speech should be allowed for everyone that's not going to harm others. But, you know, it can be dangerous. We hear a lot about freedom of speech. But actually, freedom of expression is a human right. So how does it work in the real world? Rosie Jones is a comedian who has a lot to say about just how complicated free speech can be. Are you ready? Strong. Comedians have quite a difficult time here. Yeah. Because, you know, who are you going to make the target of your joke? Yeah. Now, who, who would you not joke about? I wouldn't joke about a person or a group of people that I don't have personal experience about. You'd be quite happy joking about disability? Yes. But even that is tricky because in my comedy, I make jokes about myself. I make jokes about the way I walk and the way I talk because it's me. If somebody else comes along and makes a joke about the way you talk, yeah. what do you think of that? It depends who they are. I think you can say anything as long as your intention is good. Do you think that social media has helped free speech? It's given more people a voice? I fundamentally think social media is good because it allows free speech. It allows me to talk to so many people and to hear so many opinions. But people do sometimes pile in on you on social media, don't they? Yes, and that is a bad side of free speech. Um, being on TV means that people think it's OK to go on Twitter and make fun of what I look like or what I sound like. And it, it's hurtful. Most of us would agree that being able to express ourselves freely was important, but there are limits, and that's where the disagreements start. Those disagreements go way back. In Greece, over 2,000 years ago, the people of Athens were thinking long and hard about who could have a voice. They were governed by a system which might sound familiar, democracy. They were the first to use that word. It comes from the Greek words demos, which means people, and kratos, which means rule or power. But Athenian democracy wasn't quite like ours. The people of Athens didn't need to elect someone to speak on their behalf like our MPs do for us. They had big meetings where ordinary citizens had the right to stand up and say exactly what they thought when it came to the city's major decisions. They had a handy name for this idea that everyone should be able to speak equally. They called it Isegoria. We might translate it today as freedom of speech. Put like that, it sounds great. But actually, when the ancient Athenians referred to the people, they just meant adult men. 
the people didn't include women or slaves or foreigners or children. And even if you were one of the lucky men who had a voice, it didn't mean your fellow citizens wanted to hear what you had to say. The Athenians thought that sometimes people needed to be shut up, and they invented a way of doing just that. <laughs> OK, explain what these are for. I mean, what is this process all about? How does it work? OK, so once a year, the Athenians would get together and make two decisions. First, whether to get rid of someone, and second, who it should be. And they would take little bits of clay, which they used as paper, and write down the name of the person they wanted to get rid of. And whoever got the most votes got booted out. You've got it, exactly. Right, let's have a go then, come on. <laughs> there you are. Right. I'm very sorry, Mary, but I'm going to get rid of you from Athens. Well, that's a bit mean. <laughs> In which case, I think I'm going to get rid of you then. No! Alex, I'm writing. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> now, of course, everyone could only have one vote, but since it's the two of us, I think it's all right if we vote a few extra times. <laughs> so, who's getting booted out then? I'm sorry to tell you, you've gotten the most votes. You're getting booted out of Athens for 10 years. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's very mean. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, it feels to me, and it would because I've just got booted out, it feels to me a bit like cancel culture, this. I can see why you would say that, but there are some differences. If you think about it, they only do this once a year, and it's a democratic process where they all vote to make the decision, which is pretty different from cancel culture, which can happen overnight. This may all seem very weird and a very long time ago, but actually, the Athenians called these bits of pot ostraca, and they called the whole process ostracism. And we still use the word ostracize when we mean exclude someone or push them away. So, in a sense, there's still a bit of this ancient pot culture in our world too. In 399 BC, the Athenians decided to shut up one man in particular. That man was called Socrates. Socrates was a philosopher, and he was famous for questioning people about big issues like justice, courage, and love, and often proving they didn't really know what they were talking about. Some people accused him of disrespecting the gods and corrupting the young men of Athens. This landed him in trouble, which was much worse than being ostracized. Socrates was put on trial. If he found himself in court today, what would have been the case for and against? This old gentleman in the dock, he might look innocent, he might look a bit like your granddad, but I tell you, he's a dangerous radical. Uh -huh. What's he doing? He's corrupting the youth of our city. He's teaching them to question everything. He's teaching them to question things that we know are true. I mean, if you let Socrates off the hook, you might as well send a climate change denier and an anti-vaxxer into every school in the country. I have to say, we can't let it go on. He's got to be stopped. Uh -oh. Whoa. Come on, as Socrates would say, my learned friend, you need to think harder about all of this. The point is, how do we get to decide who is speaking the truth? How can we decide what's true without questioning it? Being disruptive and provocative is good for us. <laughs> oh, come on. This man is dangerous. You have to remember that words like his can do harm. And I don't just mean that words can hurt our feelings. Words can kill you. Yay. I mean, look at the anti-vaxxers. Look at the climate change deniers. If we believe them, we are literally 
killing people. Yes, this can sometimes be dangerous. But how much more dangerous would it be, particularly for a democracy, to impose agreement and to boot people out of our community just for saying things that some people don't agree with? Well, we've got a problem here. Is Socrates a nice, constructive disruptor, a cuddly, inclusive kind of guy? Or is he? a dangerous radical. That's what I think. But, jury, the verdict is yours. Should Socrates have been allowed to express himself? But what if his ideas were dangerous to Athenian society? In the end, Socrates was found guilty and sentenced to death by drinking poison. It's one of the most controversial decisions in history. Was this the ultimate cancelling? Well, he has become one of the most famous philosophers in history, so maybe not. There have been arguments about free speech almost as long as there have been human beings on the planet. There are always going to be people we disagree with, who have views that we think are wrong or offensive. But how do we deal with that? Should we cancel them? Or should we let them have their platform? After all, can we really be so sure that we are the ones who are right. <laughs> <laughs>